Hello, I'm Rebecca of Pocketful of Posies. In today's video, I will be using a completely free pattern from Mood Patterns to make a 1960s style jumper dress. This jumper dress is inspired by a costume from the Netflix series, The Queen's Gambit. This project went through a few changes, at least in my original concept of what I wanted to do and how I wanted it to look but I will share those with you. And also I did have to do some fiddling around with the bodice pattern to get it to fit right and I will go through how I made all of those changes as well. So without further ado, let's get into it. Here we go. As per usual, I began with a mock-up. I cut my darts because lazy. I got the darts pinned and started pinning the rest of the bodice pieces together. Hercules lent his support. Okay, so I have put my mock up together. I just sewed the back seam. The actual dress has a zipper. And the front, the front is sewn closed, um, but I figured for fitting purposes, it might make more sense to do, um, to do it in the front. So it's actually, it's a little big. I actually might cut the next small, next size down. Because I don't want it to be, to have this much room under the arms. And I think it probably, I think it's overlapping the amount it's supposed to overlap in the front, but yeah, just got a lot of, a lot of excess room. And the sides, I might try cutting the next size, uh, the next size down. I just cut the biggest size because I usually am <laughs> the biggest size in patterns and based on my measurements, that's the size that I thought I would need. However, I really haven't measured myself since my surgery and all of its aftermath. And my measurements I think have changed some uh, after surgery and then the diabetes diagnosis so I've been following a diabetes food regime and also exercising so um, yeah I might just need the next size smaller this is interesting <laughs> Okay, here's what I well, here's what I decided to do. So the back piece, I took out, I went to the next smallest size, just at the center back. I did not change the top edge. I kept it because I think the shoulder seam was hitting in the right place. So I'm just taking a little bit of width out. I just took that. I didn't change the side seam on the back piece. The side front piece, I t 
took it down to the next size. So this is where I'm I took the most out. It was about an inch difference. So I took that out right here of the side. I did not change the front or the, the where it meets the front piece. I didn't change that because I thought that the where the princess seams are was in the right place as well and I didn't change I didn't change the length up at the top. And then for the front piece I didn't change the side where it meets the side front but I did take out just this little I mean it's not much down to the next size smaller but I but I left the length up at the top for the shoulder the same so I'm gonna cut that out and see how it goes still too big under the arms okay so here's what I have decided to do to fix the too big arm side I'm going to just because it fits in the waist so I'm going to just taper taper it up so from the waist I'll leave and then I'll do an angle up why aren't we focusing an angle up on both pieces the side side back to the back so I'm gonna sew that on this mock-up before I adjust the pattern and see how that goes okay that seemed to have worked pretty well So here's my pattern piece. So I'm just going to go ahead and make the change to the pattern piece as well. So I'm gonna mark an inch here and then taper it down. To the waist. All right, I feel good enough about this mock up here that I'm confident to cut out the fashion fabric, which is a cotton twill. It's kind of heavy, and it's this was originally going to be a winter project, but we are getting into spring here in Louisiana now. So uh, it's a little heavy for spring, but I think it'll still be a really, a really fun outfit and a good thing to wear. And something I can wear with different blouses underneath it at different times of the year. So I've got my mock-up, gonna cut out my fashion fabric and I think the reason I was having so much trouble with the arm side is because I'm compared to my waist size my bust measurement is not that large or that much bigger than my waist measurement so I mean I really essentially probably could have done a small bust adjustment to the pattern and that probably would have solved the problem as well but this worked this works just fine so that's what we're gonna do and we're gonna go forward <laughs> okay so after reading some comments on an Instagram post I've decided to mock up the skirt as well I didn't think I would need to because it's a circle skirt but based on some comments I got I'm gonna go ahead and do that now the problem is is that because this is a large size it doesn't fit on the fabric 
folded the way you would normally fold the fabric. So I'm folding it horizontally instead of vertically and hoping for the best for this mock-up. Lucius was insistent about supervision. Please ignore the mess on my floor. Alright, so I think I am going to shorten the waistline just a little bit, like an inch, something like that, because uh, I think it's hitting too low on my waist, and I think that's the only change I'm going to make. Uh, the skirt looks good. I actually I really like the way it flows. I love this fabric. I was originally going to make the jumper out of that fabric, but... I knew I didn't have quite enough and also I was worried that it wouldn't, that it would be too thin and uh, clingy. So I decided to go with twill instead, which I think that's going to be very heavy and it's not going to have that same swishiness, but it will be more, I guess, have more body or more sub I don't know now I'm regretting my choices and wishing I had bought a different fabric to make this out of I really like the swishiness but the original is a heavier I think it's wool so yeah that's why I went with the twill because it was heavier but mm. so after thinking about it I have decided to not use the green twill. It's too heavy. I won't be able to wear it until winter time and I will use that green twill for something else. Maybe a walking skirt in the winter time. <laughs> so I was thinking about what fabrics do I have enough yardage of to make this skirt and I have recently been trying to organize my fabric and remembered that I have this flowy I don't know what it is I'll show you so it's this blue fabric it's a nice it's a really nice color it's kind of the texture is kind of crepey so it might be some type of crepe I don't really know. I bought it years ago. It was on clearance. I think I got it for like $4 or $4.50 a yard and I bought 10 yards of it. I'm pretty sure. So there is a lot of yardage and it's heavy. So it's definitely weightier than that material I was using for my mock-up but it's still, it's not thick and it has a nice drape. So I think this is gonna work. Now, unfortunately, that means that I'm not going to have my Harvey Girls Queen's Gambit mashup exactly because I won't be using green material, but I still plan on trying to remake that Harvey Girls costume with the walking skirt. So maybe I'll just, instead of making it Harvey Girls Queen Gam Queen's Gambit mashup, I'll just do Harvey Girls costume. And that might be nice for the holidays this year. So we'll keep that in mind. Now we have the fun task of cutting this fabric out. It's wibbly. It's got some stretch, which it's fine, I think, for this for this project. I'm going to be lining the bodice with a, a non-stretch material, so the bodice should be okay, um, and the skirt should be okay, I think. it's. I don't think it's going to stretch too much. I'm definitely going to let it hang before I do any hemming, but... Oh. Let's go. 
Again, I cut the darts rather than mark them, and it worked just fine. <sighs> okay, so my skirt and my bodice are all cut out, and this fabric is wibbly. It wasn't easy to cut, but I think it's going to be good. I'm going to, I cut out lining fabric of just some blue cotton that I had in my stash. It's not an exact match. It's a much brighter blue. Well, it's a different blue altogether, but hopefully that lining is not going to show at all. I'm going to definitely do some understitching to make sure that the lining doesn't fold out and become visible. But I also was thinking, now my mock-up was loose enough that I didn't, I just, I sewed up the back seam and just pinned the front seam. When I did the mock-up, when I put the skirt on, I just sewed the skirt to the bodice, the mock-up bodice, and I just sewed them together and I, I had already sewn up the back seam of the bodice because I left the front open so that I could get it on and off and try it on myself easier. And so I didn't sew up the back seam or I didn't unpick the back seam and leave it open when I sewed the front on or when I sewed the bodice on. I just sewed it all up and hoped that I was able to get it on without having to unpick the back and I did it I was able to get it on over my head just fine it wasn't too tight it's a little bit like it's a little loose but not too loose like comfortable loose I guess uh, it's got some ease I guess is what I'm trying to say it's got ease so I actually don't think I even need any closure at all I think I'll be able to just slip it on and off over my head without any trouble I guess that's one benefit to not, to not being particularly busty <laughs> but I uh, I think that's what I'm gonna do I don't think I'm gonna fool with a zipper in the back I hate zippers and if I don't need it why bother so I will not be showing that part because I'm not gonna do it I'm pretty sure I'll let you know for sure when I make the final decision, but pretty sure I'm not going to worry with the zipper in the back. So there we go. Cheers. All right. I think it's about time to read the instructions. <laughs> the instructions say to sew the skirt panels first, sew the backs to the fronts, her please and then um, and then do the bodice I think I'm just gonna go ahead and do the bodice first I don't think it really matters um, and so the I'm gonna sew the fashion fabric pieces together and then sew the lining pieces together and then put those together so that's next, huh, Hercules? So let's get sewing. got the bodice lining sewn together and then moved on to the fashion fabric.
Well, I sewed one of the seams of the bodice on the wrong direction. So, <sighs> so seam ripping time. After fixing my mistake, I ironed the bodice seams open. I used my tailor's ham for the curved seams. All right, I'm going to start working on the skirt and it's just three pieces, two back pieces and a front cut on the fold and the instructions say to do French seams, so I'm going to do that. French seam is just when you first put the pieces together, you put them wrong sides together, and then you sew that up, then trim the seam allowance, iron it, and then turn it to the other side, right sides together, and then you sew again, and then that encases the raw edges. So. We're going to do that on the skirt seams and then start attaching it to the bodice. After sewing the skirt pieces together, I began pinning the lining to the bodice right sides together. After sewing, I trimmed the seam allowance before ironing for understitching. I ironed the seam allowance toward the lining. Then I sewed close to the seam to keep the lining from rolling to the outside. The bodice fronts are overlapped and sewn. For the arm size, I turned the outer fabric and lining edges in toward each other. I pinned and pressed them, but this fabric is reluctant to iron flat. I whipped the lining to the fashion fabric, the nimble thimble, not so nimble, or perhaps too much as it kept leaping off my finger. <laughs> This is going well. All I have left to do is finish sewing the lining on this armhole and then I'm going to put the skirt on. Now the instructions say to use French seams for the skirt. I don't think I'm going to do French seams. I don't want it to be that bulky and this fabric definitely has some weight to it. So I'm just going to do a regular I'm going to put it on just right sides together like I normally would and then once I once it's together I'm going to either trim and zigzag or trim and cover it in bias tape or bias binding. Um, that I have not decided yet. but. Gonna finish this and then we'll get the skirt on. Hey buddy. So four. I got my skirt sewn on. Realized after I finished that I sewed it with a longer stitch length than I wanted to. I had it set for gathering and there you go. So I did that but I'm just gonna let it hang for a bit and see if it's gonna hold and then if 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 it looks like it's the stitches are pulling from the weight of the dress I'm going to go back and re-sew it but the dress is all together 
I'm letting it hang to see if the hem's going to uh, stretch out at all before I do any hemming. So, obviously Thor wants to leave, so I better let him out. I did end up zigzagging the waist seam allowance. Hemming time. I contemplated using bias tape on the hem, but in the end I just folded a narrowish hem to try to keep it from getting too wibbly wobbly. I used a lot of pins too. Stretchy fabric and circle skirt, not the easiest. Broke a needle. Back on track. Then it was finished. I like the jumper dress a lot. Despite shortening the waistline, it is still a bit long waisted. It's also longer than I originally planned because I didn't want to fool with trying to cut the hem shorter on this fabric. It does have excellent twirlability. How do you all feel about mood patterns or sewing circle skirts? Let me know down in the comments. so much for watching. I really appreciate you spending your time with me. If you enjoyed this video, give it a like, subscribe if you haven't, and if you'd like to be notified whenever I upload, you can hit that little bell icon. To support the channel further, I have a coffee account and that is linked down below. Again, thank you so much and I will see you on our next sewing adventure. Bye!